If it's broke, then fix it. Welcome to another episode of When It Comes Down To It. This time we're talking about troubleshooting refrigerant dehumidifiers. When working on a refrigerant dehumidifier that has failed for some reason out in the field or in testing, we need to make sure that we assess it properly so that we actually fix the problem and not just the symptom. So in order to do that, to find the actual issue, we're going to have to know how the system works, then we're going to also know what the components do, and then that way when we figure out what it's not doing, we can identify the component that's causing the problem and replace it. So before troubleshooting any particular device, no matter what it is, in this case a refrigerant dehumidifier, the technician needs to understand how the refrigeration cycle works and how the dehumidifier operates and how all of its components work together to remove water primarily and give you, of course, a little heat as a byproduct. The first thing to remember is filtration. Air is going to be entering through a filter. Always make sure that the filters are easy to change and are changed repeatedly so that we have a nice clean dehumidifier inside. Once it passes by the filter, what's going to happen is it is going to hit what we call the cold coil or the cooling coil. Now this is basically going to be a several process system in our new refrigerant dehumidifiers. These high temp LGRs are designed to where they have a few pre-cooling systems or an adjustable fan speed to regulate to make sure that we're cooling down below dew point but we're also not freezing up unless absolutely too cold in the environment. The idea is to keep the dehumidifier running. So high temp LGRs or HDLGRs are designed to operate in a higher temperature environment, but they also must maintain operational ability in a cooler environment, say below 70 degrees when they're used in that location. This means that the air is going to come through the filtration, of course. Then once it passes that, it will pass through a coil or series of coils that will substantially cool the air down. Now remember, as we take heat energy out of the air, like the nighttime cooling after the sun goes down on a summer day, there's not enough heat energy left to support all of the water molecules up in the atmosphere, which means they condense as dew on the ground as we see in our environment. And here, they're going to condense on that cold coil. So water hits the cold coil, condenses, runs down the coil, drains into a pump, and then is pumped out. Number one of our failure items is typically a pump. We're going to get into the repair in just a second. Once the air is cooled and dehumidified to a point, it is actually at or very close to 100% relative humidity at a cold temperature, and we don't want that to happen. We're going to use now the outside coil of our air conditioning systems at home, the condenser coil, and that is going to reheat and is actually going to cool down the refrigerant so it can come back around after compression and basically work again. So it's a cycle of cooling the air below dew point and then rewarming it up. And what that cycle does is it actually, the rewarming cools our refrigerant, it's compressed, expanded as a gas, makes the front coil cold, and then makes the back coil hot. So what we have is air entering, cool below dew point, removing moisture, hence dehumidification, and then heat it up at the second coil, and then exhaust it out the other side of the dehumidifier. So now we wind up with what? Drier, warmer air. And that's what we should be having out of every dehumidifier. If you're looking in the grain depression, we've got another video on that for you. Okay, so now we have the dehumidifier open, and you can see that, number one, somebody's been changing the filter on this machine, because it's got a fair enough hours on it, and it's very clean inside. That's a good point, and you want to make sure you thank your maintenance people for taking care of your equipment. So the first thing, of course, is the filtration up front. Simple pleated filter. Uh, Merv 8s are good. If you can go to Merv 11s or even 13s, you're going to have a higher level of filtration. You're going to have less dirt in the machine in a longer life, but you are going to have a little bit more expensive of a filter change. Once we pass the filtration, as you can see, we have a pre-cooling coil in this particular case. The actual evaporator coil in this particular section right here is set in the center, and then we have a post cooling coil. So what this back coil is going to do is it's actually going to take some of the cooling energy and bring it around to the front 
And what that means is that the air coming in, let's just say it's 80 degrees in the room, this pre-cooling coil may cool it down 10, 15 degrees or so, and that means that we're going to get 15 degrees better dew point or better cooling out of the system, which means it's going to be a lower grain refrigerant, hence the terminology LGR. That's where it came from. So because of this adaptation, we're going to pre-cool the air, then we're going to final cool it, and this is the coil that will actually have the water formation on it, and then this back coil will actually then act as a somewhat of a little heater and start warming the air back up. Now you can't see it too easily, but underneath this particular cover is the condenser coil. This is, like I said, in your home unit, the outside piece that puts the heat off into the atmosphere. So this is going to be where your heat is exhausted then your fan is behind that and outside of this side of the dehumidifier we're going to have warm dry air. So simple, humid, warm air from the room comes in, gets filtered so we keep out the trash and debris, it gets pre-cooled, final cooled and dew point removal or moisture removal at that point in time, preheating, final heating and then of course through the fan and exhausted back into the room. So we wind up taking warm humid air and turning it into nice warmer or hot dry air and that's what we're looking for out of the system. Now, of course the one thing that makes that whole system happen is our compressor right over here on this side of it and of course the controls that operate the compressor. So remember folks in the field we can always change filters in a pinch we can probably even clean the coils but once we go past coil cleaning and we get into this refrigerant cycle you're going to need formal training on that so make sure you have it before you cause a bigger problem than you started with. So now that you understand how the refrigeration cycle works and you more or less get the concept of the pieces and parts and what they do, we need to identify the symptoms. What is the unit not doing? That way we can identify the component failure that is actually the problem. Of course, is what we're looking for is to fix the problem, not just one of the symptoms along with it. So if the dehumidifier is doing nothing at all, the first thing to do, of course, is check your power supply. Make sure no one's clapped off the third prong on the ground here, but uh, this particular one has a light, so when it's plugged into the wall, it tells you you still got power here. But does it tell you you have 110 volt power? You might only have 90 volts on the line because water is in the electrical system, in which case systems may not start. So make sure your power is proper. At that point in time, if you've ensured that the wall power is proper um, and you have no lights on the dehumidifier, the more than likely aspect is, is that it has an internal circuit breaker or fuse or printed circuit board problem that is not allowing power to the machine. So the concept is look at the symptom, it's not turning on, then let's look at the problem. Is it the wall outlet, is it the power cord, or is it our operational circuit board or something more significant inside the machine causing a shutdown failure? If the machine's up and operating, but not operating properly, we probably got good power, circuit boards, and everything else working. First thing to always check is our filter. Folks, Dirty filters means that we're going to have lower airflow. Lower airflow results in freezing up coils, and also, if you don't change the filter often enough, eventually debris will pass through the filter and it will start dirtying the coils. Again, reducing airflow and reducing efficiency. So if it's an airflow or low grain depression issue, one of the first things you want to look at is the cleanliness of the filter and the cleanliness of the coils inside the machine. One of our next biggest issues that we have a lot of times is it's not pumping out water. Now that could be one of two reasons it's not pumping out water. Number one, our hose could be kinked or jammed, so our drain hose needs to be clear and in good shape. And on top of that, we need to inspect the pump inside the dehumidifier to make sure that the pump is free and clear of debris. Remember, any debris that makes it past the filter will stick on the coil. As the water runs down the coil, it takes the debris with it right into the pump. Then we store the dehumidifier for a month or two on a nice warm, humid shelf inside of a warehouse, and guess what? We grow funk in the pump, is what I call it. Basically, it's an algae formation inside the pump that jams up impellers and causes major issues with pump efficiency. Keep the filters clean. Now lastly, if we don't have a pump issue, we don't have a filter issue, we do not have any grain depression. In other words, the unit seems to 
pump out. Um, when we hit the pump purge situation, it puts in a little bit of water, but we have very little grain depression out of the machine, even in a very humid environment. One of the best ways to test it is run it next to a known operating dehumidifier and compare grain depression to make sure that you're in the operational range and it should be better. Once you've done that, then the next thing to do We've already talked about airflow filtration and our cleanliness on our coils. At this point in time, there's a potential for a small refrigerant leak or overall time frame is happening our compressor is wearing. At this point in time, it's needed to call some help for assistance to have the refrigeration circuit itself looked at. Now, if you decide to go for a refrigeration license, I would highly recommend, number one, get your refrigeration license so you can charge the refrigeration side of the systems and also take a small appliance repair course because quite actually, there's not much difference between this dehumidifier, a window air conditioner, or refrigerators and freezers. They all operate on the same concept, so small appliance repair people are definitely the people who have to take a look at the machine once it's past your ability to repair. So when it comes down to it, first thing you need to know is how it works. Turn your symptoms of what it's not doing into the actual problem of what's causing the symptoms. And then always remember, if it's beyond your capacity, ask for assistance with parts and service help. Once you ask for that assistance and get properly trained, you'll be able to fix the dehumidifiers completely in the shop. As always, thanks to CNR Magazine for support of the series. And thank you for learning with rtilearning.com. So the first thing we need to understand is, of course, if it's not doing anything at all, we need to be checking our... There's a blooper. 